All right, hello. So, me and my good friend Justin over here are making our yearly trip to Wyoming to fish for an unusual fish called burbot, some people call. Um, also, lean cod and all sorts of other degrading names you could think of that we don't call it. But anyways, we like to come out once a year, catch as many as we can. It's a different kind of fishing. We're gonna be fishing at night. We're getting a late start today, but we're still early for burbot. So now we're gonna take all this, get nice and comfy out there on the lake. And I'll kind of show you our setup. So now that we're out here, the reason we pick where we do is this lake, as you can see, is just big flat. It's a big mud flat. It's not very deep. Um, there's not really any structure anywhere. You always hear about mud with these burbots, especially when you're looking like the Midwest fishermen. But here, behind me, you can see we've got this big rock wall. And it's really the only structure um, like it on the whole reservoir. And it kind of comes to a 90 here. So there's two big bodies of water that meet here. Um, so this is where we always set up. We'll set up out to the deepest parts of the lake to start, um, about 40 feet. They allow us to run six fishing poles a person here. So we just to put them in a single file line, starting at the deepest depth, all the way up to six or less feet right on the bank. And uh, you'll see the fish as they come in at night. Usually they'll start on the deeper poles and they'll slowly move towards um, this rock face. I don't know if they're fishing for crawfish or what, but I imagine that's what they're doing in here. So um, we're gonna get set up, start drilling some holes, put the fish finder down there just for depth. We don't really expect to see fish yet because it's early, but if it's still sunshine like it is now, we'll put out some trout rods and see if we can catch some rainbows and some browns before it gets dark and then we'll switch. So, oh, he's on now. So I don't know if you've seen these jaw jackers before, but essentially you can just, no, he's there. You can just set down a still bait. Um, in this case, that's a paddle bug and it had a little bit of worm tipped on it and put the line over the trigger. And if they bite it, um, the tension of the rod will set the hook for you. And it popped, it's popped twice. And sometimes these real finicky trout, you don't get them. But Justin, after it set off, nice brown trout, stayed persistent, was able to get him hooked up. Catch a lot of nice browns in here. It's the only reservoir I go to where I can consistently catch brown trout in the ice. Nice, got the hook popped out. We don't need to eat that one, right? You can go back as you want him. Okay, one down. So we've got the shack set up, a couple, we run poles out both sides of the tent, just in case um, they're either shallow or deep, then we kind of got it covered. But still getting set up in here. Um, so this hole is 18 feet, that one's 12. 12 is usually like dead on. So we'll see what comes tonight. All right, so we're just getting set up for burbot. It's gonna get dark here pretty soon. So try and get the early bite, but I'm just gonna show you mostly what we're using. So classic um, glow two jigs, but um, since we have them all out there running dead by themselves, I'll just shove a glow stick in them, keep them lit all night wrong, rather than glowing them every 15 minutes. That gets old. Um, these are real popular. It's a Northland Tackle, these and these I think are both Northland tackle. Um, they're real nice because you can you can see that one still has an old glow stick in there that I got to punch out. But you just insert the glow stick, the glow all night. Um, the treble hook definitely has an advantage of hooking up over the single, obviously. Um, but burbots do have a very hard head, so it's kind of nice to have that treble hook. And we bait pretty heavy. Um, a couple other ones we're trying here is the. Big nasty tackle. He just 
pick these up. We've never used them, so we'll see how they go. But nice and heavy, so it'd be really easy to jig. Um, same thing, Northland Tackle on that one. But kind of just our basic setup. Um, we're using shrimp to tip with instead of we're not using chub meat or anything like that. The shrimp has always done better here. And like I said, I think that's because they're coming up here into these um, rock ledges and rock outcroppings to search for crawfish. So the shrimp has always done better for us. And then we'll also use some of the smelly jelly. Smelly jelly sticky liquid. Obviously, everything stuck to it. But that is where we're going to start. Weasel. Down. Sorry, I missed a lot of it. I just walked in the tent because I was outside messing with jaw jackers, getting ready for burbot, and I come back in on my polis. I got this ice and easy rod that stands up by itself and stuck on the hole. This big old fat rainbow grabbed a hold of it. So I was outside filming a weasel. Oh, that's us getting burbot rods ready, and there's a white weasel running around out there. I'm sure you just seen so. Got lost it, but that little thing's just doing really well. Didn't even lose my worm. It's a lucky worm. It's made it through two big rainbows. So back down. And we're fishing suspended. Um, so this hole is 18 foot deep, and I'm dropping it down about 12. So, well, same pulls off for the third time. It won't be long until we catch our first burbot, but that's a trout. He's running hard now. Yeah, that's a trout. He's too quick for a burbot. Burbot are slow. What? All that? Yeah, had some spunk in him, huh? Come on. <laughs> so what I was trying to say is we got, so that's that paddle bug. We've caught three fish on that one now. This pole is right there, same lure, similar depth. And that's the fascinating thing about ice fishing is that one's never gone off. And that one's gone off three times. That's why we like doing this single file line from here. We'll go all the way to shore because we can see like the, how they're running across this shoreline. The lake won't get any deeper than this. So from this pole all the way out, it's just flat. So uh, we don't usually cover the mud flats. We tried fishing the mud flats last year. Nothing. Drag up a little. Yeah, it's a little loose. Same pole again. I'm setting it down. Yeah. It doesn't have to make sense. We're just glad it's catching. We'd move our tent over here, but Dad. we know come dark, we're gonna want it where it is. You don't want to see this fish. I do want to see this fish. What is it? <laughs> is it the dork fish that's gonna jump out of the water and yell, I'm a dork fish? You got a corn dog. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what you got here. No, it's a Utah trout. <laughs> it's a Utah trout? Is it a planter? <laughs> no. Yeah. So just so you guys know, as soon as you drive across the Wyoming border, the deer get bigger and so do the fish, so. <laughs> This one, this one's a, a transplant from Utah. Let's see him. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> I got a sun behind you. Trying to hold a bar of soap in prison. <laughs> cool. Nice. I'm trying to get burbot rods set up in the tent, but we're not doing a good job. in the tent because Justin was kicking my butt out here and this is hole is just adjacent to the hole he was using and it only took about a minute another pretty rainbow what so this one's what holes this called though oh Justin says this is the money hole sorry I, I can't disrespect the hole but let me just show you what I'm using here you see that so he's got a paddle bug 
but I'm just using this. It's a Rafinki jig. It's just got a little bit of frizz on it, but. Ooh. So just tip that with a little bit of worm. That's also working, so maybe I could try anything. I see if you break that. Put my cleat through it. Ah, we moved into the tent. The hook's hanging out of his mouth. I don't want to eat it. Aha! Alright. Ooh, that's a little better fish. Get some light on. He's really dark, but it's a better fish. Second one I've hooked here in the tent on that same little pink jig. All right, pop them off. Pretty fish. It's probably pushing 20 inches, right? Close to. Pretty native. So when we've been waiting to go off, normally our shallowest hole is our best hole, but it finally went off. The jaw jacker went off, set the hook for us. We usually catch our biggest fish right here cruising the shallows. Yeah, that's a good fish. Come on, Ooh, buddy. It's hard when they're, it's hard when you can't get your hands around them, huh? Okay, just hold still for a second, dude. Hook come out? Yeah. Let's just see it. Let's try and get one out here in the sunlight that we can see. Like that's a cutthroat. Oh, pretty. Big old spots. Very nice. Oh, dorsal. Mm -hmm. So, just to give you a little insight here. This is normally the key. Like I said, the shallowest hole is normally our best hole. And what we'll do is just run these other little, just get that to focus. Come on. There we go. So it's just this little rafiki. It's just got a little single tail on it. And uh, just tipping that with a worm. Eh, camera doesn't like it, but. Anyways, and that's that hole six feet deep, so real shallow. All right, little update. It's just after six. It's been dark for like less than an hour, and right at dark, we started getting bites. We are yet to hook up though, so we're being a little bit more cautious than we'd like. Burbots normally come in, and when they bite it, they really just bite it, but. We had one hooked up out on the jaw jacker, but by the time I got there, it had fallen off. I was watching the rod going before I got there, but it fell off before I could get there. And I've had a couple hit mine right here in the tent a couple times, but can't hook them yet. So it's really early still. On? Let me know. Yeah. All right, number one. That is what we're after. It's not a bad one. I was actually just scooping the ice out around the hole because they freeze up and I thought I set the jaw jacker off. So I set it back up and it went off again and hit me. There's a fish on it. So, kind of cool looking. But it's just on that little Northland tackle glow. Shove the glow stick in there. Get some bait. Which were shrimp and we'll throw it back down. This little guy. Sorry, I misunderstood you. I thought he said he was gone, not he's on. There's a little one. Hey, he spit the bait out on top at least. We can reuse that. That was already out here. Oh, maybe it's for mine then. That's the same one though. That's our deepest pole. Check these other jaw jackers. Still down. Okay. It's a race. You just sit in the tent and listen for the 
This is for the jaw jackers to go off. Then we gotta find which one it was. But it beats sitting out here in the cold all night. The wind is starting to pick up. It's pretty cold, as you can imagine in Wyoming at night. Those are all still down. Let me know what you think. We're trying this uh, uh, cooking oil in the holes. Trying to keep them from freezing. Um, seems to help. I mean, it's not 100%, but it seems to be slushy rather than freezing over solid. So put in the comments if you guys have something else, something that works for you. Any cool tricks? Help keep our holes from icing over. Obviously, these ones don't ice over, which is convenient. But uh, I haven't had a bite in here for a while, so. Come on, little dude. We'll make it happen. Little one. Oh. It's a burbot, though. Having a hard time hooking up. It's getting a lot of bites and a lot of misses. So I shortened my bait up. I think I had too much bait hanging off the lure that they could hit the bait and not get the lure. But slowly but surely, we're getting a couple. All right, we're back in the tent again today. Set up on the holes where we caught the most trout yesterday. We ended up catching six burbot last night. Lost a few, but pretty slow. I'm getting a bite, hold on. Don't wanna miss a bite. Anyways, we're gonna try and catch some trout today. There's supposed to be a storm blowing in. About four o'clock, it's already starting to blow in. The winds are starting to pick up. And we want to be out of here before that. Cause it really stuck. It really sucks picking up camp and all of this stuff in a blizzard. So I'm gonna try and catch this fish. Sorry about the wind, but jaw jacker popped. Lost one a minute ago. What? Oh, shovel. That's a good fish. Catch him. Oh, we might need pliers, huh? Alright. Oh, let me see him and I'll go. Where'd that hook go? Alright, I'll get some pliers. Alright, finally got the hook out, but gonna keep that one I don't think he's gonna survive and I feel like keeping a couple fish today I do like fish so I might as well take advantage of it there's last night's burbots I didn't mention before but it is a uh, mandatory here to kill them so if you have any questions about why that's why we kept them all and killed them all Same little pink lure. There he is. My light rod. You're gonna get him this time. Yeah, that rod makes everything seem huge. He's a monster! Look, you're serious. Oh, <laughs> it bounces off the roof, dude. Where was your attempt at the save? You're like, water's cold. <laughs> All right, well, back to this.